Hey what's up, welcome to the second episode of my favorite fight series. In this installment, I will go through what I think is the most brutal fight slash death in anime. That fight is Mayuri Kurotsuchi vs Zayela Poro Grans. Before I start covering the fight, I'll go through a quick backstory of the arc so we have a better idea of the events leading up to this. Basically, Ichigo and his friends were trying to save another friend who got kidnapped. In order to do that, they were given the task of infiltrating the enemy's base in Waco Mundo. From there, they had to defeat these highly powerful, ranked Hollow Soul Reaper hybrids named Espadas. Ichigo ended up defeating this guy who always says Nino, but ended up getting destroyed shortly after by the next Espada he faced, who was the same one who kidnapped Orihime. Chad had the same fate, as he beat some afro dude and got wrecked by an espada right after. As for Uryu, he defeated some annoying girl and continued on to search for Orihime, while Rukia fought to near death with an espada member and nearly lost her life defeating it. All this shows that espada members are not to be messed with. That leaves us with Ichigo's last friend, Renji, who had to face an espada at the start. However, this espada was different as Renji clearly struggled to defeat him. His name was Sayela Poro Grands, and he was much smarter than the other enemies they faced. Even after joining forces with Uryu and two Arankar, they were both still brutally tortured and defeated by Grands, the scientific madman. Let me tell you this, Renji and Uryu are no pushovers. This is Spada with one sick Just as Renji and Uryu were about to get killed, they were saved by reinforcements from the Soul Society. Who would have to face this terrifying Espado member, who was now fully recovered and fresh again? Who could have beaten him? Well, who better than the Soul Society's own sick science f Mayuri Kurotsuchi. Arankar. 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 <laughs> Espadas. <laughs> How fantastic! My man Mayuri is not to be messed around with, as he has proven to be just as sick as Zayala Poro. Despite their similarities as crazy scientists, they share a lot of differences, with Zayala Poro being more flamboyant and Mayuri being more scary and creepy. And so we start the fight between two sick and sadistic scientists. At the start of the fight, Zayala Poro captures Mayuri and creates a marionette of him. His special power allows him to make a puppet that represents you. The puppet comes with pills that signify different body parts and when the puppet or the pills are damaged, the damage is inflicted onto you. Zayala Poro starts to break the pills and we see Mayuri suffer as his insides and other parts of his body are torn to shreds. This goes on until Zayala Poro breaks a vital point in Mayuri. In other words, Mayuri was brutally tortured by having all the parts in his body destroyed until he was given a final kill shot. Turns out, after all that, Mayuri was still alive and in high spirits, even though the doll is still working and destroying his internal organs. But how is that possible? How is he still standing? Turns out, Mayuri was tracking a former opponent in Uryu and got intel on what type of opponent he will be facing. From there, Zayala Poro pulls a sneaky one and captures Nemu, who is Mayuri's assistant. Mayuri, who seems unfazed, goes straight to the point after playing around for the whole start of the fight. Once his Bankai is out, it secretes a terrifying poison that immobilizes its targets with full body paralysis while also inducing high amounts of pain. Zayala Poro is now paralyzed and he is devoured by Mayuri's Bankai. As the view clears up, we see Mayuri's Bankai eating up the Espada member and Uryu and Renji start feeling the effects of the same poison. This deadly poison was used on Uryu as well in a previous fight and he would have easily died if he had not received the antidote. 
As they begin addressing the poison and the antidote, Nemu starts screaming in pain and expels this weird gas out of her mouth. Turns out, Xyalopuro still had a sneaky plan up his sleeve. Behold, La Lujuriosa's most brilliant technique, Gabriel. It gives me the ability to regenerate using my enemy's own life force. Obviously, the target is killed off. And finally, I am reborn. <laughs> Did you get all that, Mayuri Kurotsuchi? By constantly renewing my body, I will continue to exist for eternity. It is said that the phoenix is immortal. When it grows too old, it hurls itself into the fire, and from the flames it rises again anew. Understand now? That is immortality. That is perfection. It's not about transcending death. It's about incorporating death into the cycle of life. And a being whose existence cannot be interrupted by death, someone such as myself, who thrives in the endless cycle of demise and rebirth. That is what you would call a perfect being. The concept of mortality does not exist for me. Even if you did manage to smite me, I would simply rise again without a definitive end. Understand this. I cannot be killed. Even if you tried for all eternity, you could not defeat me. Mayuri Kurotsuchi. After Xyaloporo's revival, Mayuri walks towards Nemu, as if the Espada isn't even there. After seeing her, he grieves for Namu. How delightful! Actually, never mind. Despite all that happened, Mayuri is not impressed. He starts to ask Xyaloporo what it is exactly that makes him perfect. Xyaloporo, with no hesitation, lifts a finger and surprises everyone with what he does next. Suddenly, Mayuri's bankai stops listening and falls unconscious. You too? Did you really think that behemoth could eat me and nothing would happen to it? When it consumed me, my cells dissolved into it and took over its nervous system. I may not know exactly how your Zanbakuto works, but by taking over the nucleus of its motor controls, I don't really have to. Even this Bonkai thing is mine to play with. What rotten luck. Too bad your Bonkai takes the shape of a living creature that I can control. As Zayelo Poro mentioned, Mayuri no longer has control of his Bankai. Mayuri, however, shows him otherwise. Kurutsuchi is now in the predicament of fighting this terrifying opponent without his Bankai. How will he defeat such a menacing opponent while short-handed of not only his Bankai but his assistant as well? Unfazed, Mayuri resumes the fight, saying he wants to take this opportunity to test out a new drug on his opponent. To everyone's surprise, The drug I'm testing is already inside you! <laughs> I placed several drugs inside Nemu's body. Knowing that if Nemu were devoured or her body somehow compromised, they would be released into her opponent. What drug? What the hell did you give me? Well, judging by the area of her body through which you just passed, it looks like this is it. To quote Mayuri, judging on the area you went through, meaning that Mayuri probably placed a bunch of different drugs inside of Nemu. That is some real scary preparation by Mayuri. I would have loved to know what other kinds of crazy potions he hid inside her. Throughout this speech, Xyalaporo could not even understand a thing. As he mentioned, Mayuri is speaking too slow. I suppose you could call it a superhuman potion. When two sword masters fight, they 
They often describe a sensation where their blades seem to freeze in midair, as if their sense of time slows down. Such phenomena are known to occur when one's senses are pushed to their limits. Well, my drug forces your consciousness into that state of heightened awareness. In other words, it's a drug that will allow anyone to experience the superhuman limits of ability and sensation. He's speaking so slowly, I can't understand him. The amazing thing about this potion, the Master Swordsman's senses are only heightened the brief instant his blade crosses his enemies. But my superhuman potion amplifies your senses by a factor of thousands, no, trillions. The drug's normal dosage is one drop diluted 250,000 times. But I made your batch special, pure and undiluted. With what's coursing through your veins, one second will feel like a hundred years. Take this sword, for instance. As I move it closer to you, your superhuman alertness makes the movement appear agonizingly slow. As if it will take several centuries to reach you. Your body cannot possibly keep up with the incredible amount of data your sharpened senses are sending it. Even if you manage to block it with your hand, it'll be hundreds of years before you feel the pain of the blade piercing your flesh. In fact, I'm talking to you in the present, but who knows when my words will actually reach your mind. For now, I bid you adieu. You'll be seeing me again. In about a hundred years. In other words, Zayalaporo ingested a potion that slowed down the person's perception of time to a point where everything was in slow motion. He would not be able to operate regularly because time now passes in an incredibly slow rate. So even though he got stabbed in the heart, he will not die instantly, but instead his body will perceive it in its superhuman time, which will take centuries. As Mayuri Kurutsuchi slides his sword into Zayala Poro Grand's heart, he bids a final farewell, which will not be seen by the Espada member for who knows how long. The best way I can describe this fight was that it was a back and forth battle of Uno reverse cards. They both surprised each other with their crazy tactics, but it was Mayuri who showed that he was better prepared for this fight. Mayuri didn't just reverse every single move that Espada Man did. You would have thought that alone would be shameful enough. But no, he goes on to trick the Espada member into ingesting a poison, which slows down his recollection of time to a point where he cannot even function. Zaya Lapora Grands was responsible for his own fate with the trap Mayuri set. He thought he had checkmated Mayuri by taking his assistant. But the exact opposite was the case. A brutal part of this fight is that Zayalaporo Grands is now wishing to actually die. God knows how many years will pass, but he still won't die because his senses are reverted into slow motion. If you thought that was brutal enough, it doesn't end there. Mayuri Kurotsuchi then aims for ideological destruction. He destroys his opponent's ideals, his self esteem the very essence of his being with this legendary speech, one of the greatest in anime. The perfect being, you said? Well, I have to tell you the honest truth as I see it. In this world, nothing perfect exists. It may be a cliché, after all, but it's the way things are. That's precisely why ordinary men pursue the concept of perfection, its infatuation. But ultimately, I have to ask myself, what is the true meaning of being perfect? And the answer I came up with was nothing, not one thing. The truth of the matter is I despise perfection. If something is truly perfect, that's it. The bottom line becomes, there is no room for imagination. No space for intelligence, or ability, or improvement. Do you understand? To men of science like us, perfection is a dead end, a condition of hopelessness. Always strive to be better than anything that came before you, but not perfect. Scientists agonize over the attempt to achieve perfection. 
That's the kind of creatures we are. We take joy in trying to exceed our grasp, in trying to reach for something that in the end, we have to admit, may in fact be unreachable. In other words, you may think that we operate on the same level, but you're wrong. The moment you started talking about perfection, you embraced an impossible concept and it already lost to me. That is, of course, if you are indeed a scientist at all. <gasps> at the end of it, he questions if the Spada really is a scientist. The ultimate insult. Mayuri's speech on perfection really shows a lot on his character. Mayuri Kurotsuchi is a soul reaper who despises perfection. His Shikai and Bankai are the manifestation of that very hatred. In Bleach, every character Zanpakuto, Shikai, and Bankai is a direct representation of the character's ideals, values, personality, and so on. Mayuri Shikai transforms his Zanpakuto into a deformed trident, far from the perfect ideal trident. In his Shikai, his Zanpakuto emits venom through every cut, which renders the victim with painful paralysis. Generally, venom and poison tend to be used by weaker animals, who eventually evolve to survive on this adaptation. Animals who, for the most part, are far from the top of the food chain, which accompanies Mayuri's view against perfection. That said, I'm not saying the use of poison makes you weak, but rather, the species that evolve to use it are often weaker in many other aspects. They have frail bodies, low intelligence, unimpressive strength. It was the poison that made them so feared, and without it, they probably would have not survived. Think of some species like frogs, snakes, and spiders. They have weak, frail bodies. They have evolved to use poison slash venom as their main tool of survival. This narrative against perfection continues on with Mayuri's second transformation. Mayuri's Bankai is a child morphed with a caterpillar. Two entities that are far from perfect. In fact, they are as far as you can get from perfection. A caterpillar, the basic stage of a lowly insect, with its highly transformational nature. A child, representing the weakest, least developed version of a human, which is also the most malleable. His Bankai represents the very essence of Mayuri Kurutsuchi's view on perfection. Far from perfect, with the childlike nature of learning new things more efficiently than any other age, and the ever-evolving identity of a caterpillar. The childlike awe and admiration of learning new things, experimenting to figure out how everything works, and the constant growth and high potential of the humble caterpillar. Compared to other characters like Aizen, who blooms into a fully evolved demon butterfly. Mayuri is a lowly child, a basic caterpillar, and it is that imperfection that allows him to constantly grow and evolve without ever reaching a plateau. In other words, Mayuri's potential is limitless. His denial of perfection and fascination of science allows him to improve at a rate like no other and discover things no one else has even come close to. When others are satisfied and basking in their own greatness, Mayuri is constantly striving for scientific improvement. This is why Mayuri is feared by many and rose up to be a captain. Kisuke Urahara must have knew that, as only someone like Mayuri can fill his role as the new captain of research and development. Oh stop! Why I'm just a lowly but handsome merchant. Say what you want about Mayuri's morals, but this man has a point in his speech. How can a man look to improve if he thinks of himself as perfect? Essentially, you are shooting yourself in the foot with that thinking, as you are pretty much saying you have no room for growth. To think you are perfect is a sure sign of conceit and arrogance, as nothing to this day can be called perfect if it relates to humanity. That is the paradox in this situation, as an imperfect being and species cannot reach perfection. I wasn't a fan of Mayuri at first because of his controversial and extreme actions. But what I felt as I watched him more was that every fight this man was in was golden. Then came this fight which was one of my favorites in Bleach, especially after that brilliant speech. How can you not be a fan of him after that? 
I think this is by far the worst beating I have ever seen. Zayela Poro Grands has to deal with the pain of being outsmarted, the pain of being stabbed to death, the pain of not being able to function and do anything for years. But perhaps worst of all, he has to deal with his perfectionist ideals being utterly shattered by Mayuri for the rest of his sad life. As he stands there trying to take in what just happened, Mayuri is there lecturing him on his hubris, like he's some child. I think the worst part of this all is that Xyloporo Grands cannot even kill himself. Saying that without context would be kind of weird, but it's true. All he could do is wait and wait and wait. With nothing but his thoughts to keep him company. The thoughts on how he was utterly decimated by this man who hates perfection. The same man who destroyed the very view he had on himself and the pillars of perfection he thought he functioned on. The only relief he will ever get is once his heart is finally pierced after eons. It's been so long. How many years, how many decades have come and gone since he... No, wait. It's been longer than that. It's been centuries. I know this much. An immense amount of time has passed. How long will it take? When will this sword go ahead and pierce my heart? This waiting is unbearable. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry up and kill me! Mayuri Kurapsuchi is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> 